Welcome to this teaching video on an anatomical fascia iliaca compartment block. This procedure is indicated as a way to provide fast and effective analgesia to those patients with a clinically obvious or radiologically confirmed hip fracture. The block reduces the need for opioids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, thereby minimising the side effects and complications of these more traditionally used drugs. Our aim in NHS Ayrshire and Aaron is for the fascia iliaca compartment block to be the definitive method of analgesia in these patients, only supplemented by morphine if required. First of all, explain the procedure to the patient and obtain verbal consent. Be aware of the procedure contraindications as listed in the table. Document verbal consent on the emergency department hip fracture performer. Then prepare your equipment using an aseptic technique. It can be helpful to lay out the equipment in the order to be used. Next, place the patient in the supine position with the leg slightly abducted and externally rotated if possible in order to identify the landmarks more clearly. The aim of the fascia iliaca compartment block is to achieve a field block by injection of local anaesthetic deep to the fascia iliaca to target the lateral cutaneous, obturator and femoral nerves. For a right hip fracture, visualise a line between the anterior superior iliac spine to the lateral border of the pubic tubercle. Divide the line into three equal parts. The left index finger marks the junction of the lateral and middle third of the line, joining the anterior superior iliac spine with the pubic tubercle. The injection entry point is approximately one centimetre caudal or distal from the junction of the lateral and middle third. Please note that the finger landmarks are reversed for a left hip fracture fascia iliaca compartment block. Once identified, the entry site can be marked with the reverse end of a needle cover. In this case, we have drawn on the landmarks to help illustrate the correct entry point. Palpate the ipsilateral femoral pulse at the level of the planned injection site. The pulse should be palpable 1.5 to 2 cm medial to the intended injection point to ensure a safe distance from the major vessels to avoid impalement. Prepare the skin with chlorhexidine 2% indicator and infiltrate the skin and deeper tissues with approximately 5 ml of 1% lidocaine local anaesthetic in the awake patient. Meanwhile, prepare the fascia iliaca compartment block injection using two 20 ml syringes with equal volumes of levobupivacaine, in this case chiracaine 5 mg per ml, and dilute with water for injection. In our emergency department, we use 100 mg of levobupivacaine for patients over 50 kg and calculate the dose on an individual basis for those patients less than 50 kilograms. No matter what dose is used, ensure the total injectable volume is diluted to 40 ml. Using an 8 gauge blunt fill needle and one of the prepared 20 ml syringes, pierce the skin at a right angle to its surface. Once through the skin, adjust the needle angle to about 70 degrees, directing the tip cranially towards the ipsilateral shoulder. Keep the needle in the sagittal plane to avoid the major vessels medially and peritoneal cavity cranially. Advance the needle through two distinct pops as it perforates first the fascia lata and then the fascia iliaca, the latter of which gives a more subtle pop. Reduce the angle between the needle and the skin surface to about 30 degrees and advance the needle a further 1 to 2 millimetres. Fix the position of the proximal plastic part of the needle securely with your non-injecting hand. Aspirate before injection and after every 5 ml injected. If aspiration is negative, start injecting the local anaesthetic. 
there should be no resistance to injection. If there is, the needle tip is likely to be within the iliacus muscle. In this case, withdraw slightly until injection is easy. There should be no pain or paresthesia on injection. After injection of the first 20 mils, change the syringe and continue to inject the remaining volume. It's common to observe some of the injected fluid coming back through the needle during the change of the syringe. Remove the needle and apply pressure for approximately 30 seconds. Then apply a simple dressing if required. Thank the patient and document the procedure details on the hip fracture performer. Finally, approximately 30 minutes later, review both the patient and their pain score, documenting this result on the hip fracture performer.